Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use video scopes to colour correct some footage inside Final Cut Pro X. In this tutorial we're going to talk about what the video scopes are and how we can use the colour correction effect to very quickly and easily um, develop a method to colour correct our shots and see as well what needs to be correct within our shots. So as we can see in front of me here um, I've got two clips on my timeline here. I've got a clip of uh, some roses in my garden that is um, overexposed over here. You can see it's a bit too bright. The colours off on it, the greens and the reds, uh, the red looks more pink. Uh, the colours are really out of sync there. Uh, they're a bit muted and drab as well. And it's got some exposure problems. So that's the first shot. And then the second shot on my timeline, I've got of just some grass. At first glance it looks okay, but actually what's happened here is the green in the shot is far too too prevalent. It wasn't actually that green when I filmed it outside, so we've got a problem here with the, the colour space of our shot. And we're also going to look at correcting some of the the exposure problems in it. So first of all, let's open up the video scopes. If you've not used video scopes before, they're a very, very useful visual tool for looking at different types of data within your picture. So I've got my picture up here, my frame of video, and I want to be able to see quickly um, what's going on in terms of its luma value, so its exposure, or its its red, green, and blue values. So to open up your video scopes, your vector scopes, go to view, and then select show video scopes at the top, and it opens up this this uh, separate monitor on the left. If you click next to the little settings wheel, we can choose from different types of video scopes. So we've got histograms, the vector scope and we've got the waveform. And within waveform as well we've got lots and lots of different things. We've got the RGB parade that shows you your red, green and blue values. You've got RGB overlay. We can look at the luma qualities for our picture. We can look at the chroma and we can go into each individual channel if we'd like and, and have a look at those. But what we're going to do first is we're going to look at RGB parade. So one important thing um, to get started, we need to add the color correct, uh, color correction filter to our video clip. So go over to the effects tab over here. If you've not already got it open, go down to the video section and go into color, and then click on color correction and drag that and drop it on your clip, or just double click it. Once you've added it on, you can go into your color board up here in the top right. I've got my video settings, and under effects, we can now see it says color correction one and there's an option to go into the colour board. And what we're going to do for both of these clips is we're going to go through and I'm going to show you my quick method for colour correcting. First of all we're going to adjust the, the darks within the shot, we're going to adjust the highlights and then we're going to adjust the colour and finally the saturation, so the vibrancy of the colour. So first of all go to your exposure settings. And in colour correction I should say we've got three different tabs. We've got colour settings, saturation settings and exposure. So colours, the actual colour values within the shot. Saturation is how vibrant your colours are, so how how lively they are or how muted. And exposure is how light or dark parts of your picture are separate from the colour. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the exposure tab, so the lightness and darkness of our picture. And to do that we're going to look at our video scope over here, which is the RGB parade, and we can see the red, green and blue values within our picture over here are arrayed across this graph. And this graph here we've got some values, 120 at the top going left to right, 100 beneath that going left to right, 75, 50, 25, 0 and then minus 20. All of our colours should sit within 0 and 100. This is the safe zone for our colours and our exposure limits. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at this and I can see that my reds are over 100. They're well close to 120 there. So what we need to do is we need to bring down the exposure um, a little bit. So I'm going to start. At the top here we've got 100. This is where stuff's overexposed and zero is where it's underexposed. So for the overexposed parts I'm going to need to bring down my highlights. So on the exposure here we've got three different controls. Highlights, which is white, midtones, which is the mid kind of brightness, and then we've got our shadows over here, which is our underexposed parts or our shadows and our black parts within the picture. So I'm going to start my highlights at the. Uh, I'm going to start my, uh, my not my highlights. I'm going to start with my my shadows over here. So by moving this, we can see that my as I move this up or down, the picture changes. But if we look over to the left in the video scopes part, we can see that as I move this around, 
the uh, the color values changed as well. So I'm dragging it so that they're as close to damn it on zero. There we go. Then I'm going to sort out my highlights over here. So I'm going to click the highlights thing, and I want to bring this red here beneath 100. So I'm going to drag that down until that's beneath 100. And there we go. And I can kind of play with my midtones to change my dynamic range, which is the amount of greys within the shot. Move that up. There. That looks about right. And we can see now I've got all of my colours are within the 100 line for the overexposed parts and zero for the underexposed parts. So the parts that are too dark or too bright. And using the, the video scope here for RGB Parade, I can very quickly check that what I'm looking at isn't overexposed and isn't underexposed. If I had a shot like this and I could see on the video scope that there was parts of the reds that were over that line, I'd know that some of my reds were overexposed in shots. So that's looking okay. Let me change my mid tones a little bit. So now that I've done my my shadows and my highlights and my mid tones in terms of the exposure, I can now go to the colours themselves. And we've got some problems here with the colour. We can see that just by looking at my picture, the colours off, the green leaves in the background look very faded and drab and, and not very green, really. And the uh, the rose itself, the uh, the reds are almost, it's almost like a crushed kind of pink colour. So I know that I've got some problems here with my colours. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to look at my colours. So um, first thing I'm going to do, once again, with the colours, we've also got the three different controls, our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights. So I'm going to change, first of all, my shadows. Uh, so let's move this over. So if I move this around, and we see how as I move this around, it's colouring those shadows. If I move it up the top, the shadows are quite brightly coloured. So where we move it to is going to have a big effect. So I'm going to try move that over there. Let's have a look at my midtones. Should I do the highlights next? So I'm going to set my highlights and and now my midtones. Mm, that's better. Okay, that is better. Next, I'm going to go into my saturation. And once again, saturation is the vibrancy of your colour. Now, my picture is quite vibrant. Once again, I can do it for the highlights, the mids, or the shadows, or off to the left here, just like with exposure. I've got one master slider control that I can control the saturation for the whole shot with. So if I move it up, you'll see how vibrant the colours get. And if I move it down, it goes all the way to black and white. So. Okay, that's looking good. And now I've fiddled with that, I'm going to go in now. I'm just going to move my exposure up a little bit. Because I've changed my colour, we can see that the colour values on the scopes over here have shifted around as well. So the aim here is to try and get all three of the RGB colours to be roughly the same size and in the same place. If you mess around with it, you'll see, if I put the uh, the highlights up there in the colour, we can see that the reds here are all crushed and they're down towards the darker part of the picture, but the uh, the greens and the blues, they're, they're overexposed, they're popping over there and they're just all over the shop. So the key is to try and balance these out, and you do that by messing around with the, the colour sends. That's about as close as damn it. Go my saturation sense and I'm just gonna just gonna play my saturation a little bit. Let's see if we can add the highlights up, add a little bit more colour to the highlights and also the midtones and then the shadows. Well shadows will keep us down. Okay, bro. Now my reds are a little bit over there, so once again let's go in and Let's bring that exposure down down a little bit. Uh, bring the shadows up 
and I'll let this down a little bit more. And there we go. Okay, so that's looking okay. So I've used the three different options within the color correction to go through and adjust my colors in my picture, the saturation, the vibrancy of colors, and the exposure, how light or dark different parts of the picture are. And I've used the the video scopes, specifically the RGB Parade here to help me monitor how that's going. So let's do a little bit of a compare and contrast. So this is how the uh, the roses are looking now in my video footage. And if I just uncheck this box next to colour correction we can preview how it was. So we can see a before and after. Perfect. And that's looking lots better already. I could probably increase the exposure a little bit of that. So if I just move this over. Okay, so that's looking good. And we can apply this exact same methodology now to the second video clip with the grass. So if I select the grass, I'm going to drag color correction onto there and go into the color board for the grass. And exactly the same process. I start with the exposure over here. And we can see already this is a more complicated kind of video scope, can't we? We can see this graphical representation of the colors. Uh, the blues are obviously way, way out. So let's start off with the exposure and we're going to start with the blacks so let's try and move the mids up a little bit and let's move the lights down We can see we've got some problems with the blues there that we're going to have to sort out now. So, hmm. let's go into the colours. Now we've done the uh, the exposure. Let's start with the darks first of all. And I'm trying to balance this blue out with the rest a bit more, so I'm going to drag that over there. See, so we've got some problems with the reds there, though. And let's try the lights now. Drag the lights over. And let's drag the mids. Let's see what difference. Ah, there we go. That's better. There we go. That's more like it. And we can see how moving this, the mids around has really made a big difference to balancing out the three red, green, and blue values within our shot. There we go. That's much better. Okay. Right now, let's go into saturation and let's see what we can do with this. Let's move saturation up a little bit. Let's do the master saturation. Ah, let's get back into our exposure now and have a little play. And we can see already that with this very simple process of using the RGB Parade video scope and trying to balance the three out and making sure that we're not going over the 100 line or under the zero line, we've already made the colours and the exposure 
within our shot much much more realistic and as it would be to the naked eye so if I quickly go back let's have a look we could still do with having a little play with the highlights I believe um, let's have a look at the highlights over here try and balance them out oh too much red Green, green and red. You can see here the highlights are a bit green, aren't they? If you look at the video scopes. Let's go back and have a little play with these again. Okay, so let's turn over our turn up our colour correction. So that's how it was. As we can really see now how green it was before and how kind of all colour was being lost there really or washed out by by how green that was. And now we can see that it's actually got the tufts of grass at the top of the right colour and we've got more variation of greens and yellows and, and a, a good colour space going on here really. I can see a little bit of uh, the blues are underexposed so let's just bring that up a little bit. There we go. <laughs> and there we go. So that's how to colour correct using video scopes and using the colour correction effect. Good luck and I look forward to seeing your colour correction. Any questions please ask them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you for watching.